Included stock CPU coolers are boring. Very good for what they are, but still boring. And don't get me wrong, I have a 3600X that I've been using for the past year, which means I really don't need an upgrade to my CPU cooler. But need is a difficult word. If you're upgrading from a stock CPU cooler to something else, you're either one, looking for performance, and two, looking for aesthetics, which is why I bought this. This is NTXT's Kraken X63 AIO cooler, and it goes pretty well with my H510 Elite case. It's also something that I've been wanting to try out for a long time now. We'll be talking about how to install it, why I chose this brand over others, as well as the C63 and the RGB version. We'll also talk about the numbers and see how the temperatures fare against each other. I'll be leaving timestamps in the description in case you need to skip ahead over something you need. If this video helps, don't forget to leave me a like and a sub. We're super close to a thousand subs and hopefully we'll be celebrating soon. But for now, let's go ahead and unbox it. Ah, NZXT. Simple, neat, and purple. I pretty much chose this brand because of how minimal it is. Inside the box, you'll get a few things. Two 140mm AER fans, the cabling for the electronics, as well as the radiator and the pump. It also comes with an Intel backplate, as well as brackets for Intel and AMD. The only other thing you need is a screwdriver. But let's get this out of the way right at the start. I won't be using the included AER 140mm fans. Even though they're very decent for performance, since I own an H510 Elite, my two front AER RGB2 fans are the ones I'll be strapping onto the radiator. I could use all four of them in a push-pull configuration, but there's a slight issue with clearance which I will get onto later on. You can also choose to use whatever your favorite bands are provided they fit the radiator. This is actually the reason I went for this version instead of the a bit more expensive RGB one since I already had them. But you're here to learn how to install this, so let's get on with it. As always, turn your PC completely off. Then go behind it, unplug it, and turn your PSU off just as a safety measure. Place your PC on a large surface so you can move it and around it comfortably. Laying it down or having it vertical doesn't really matter. I tend to do a bit of both. It just really depends on what I'm doing at the moment. Remove anything that might get in the way. And while you have it open, you might as well just clean it since you don't know when you'll get another chance. Now let's remove your previous cooler. We do this by unscrewing the four mounting points as well as unplugging the CPU fan cable. Do this one at a time until you can completely remove it. If you pull it and it's not budging, your cooler is probably stuck to your CPU which is actually something that happened to me. But don't panic, you haven't lost your CPU and there are ways to separate it. Some people will tell you to twist it and others will tell you to stick a screwdriver in and lever it. But I found that it's easier to use isopropyl alcohol and something soft like a plastic spatula and little by little easing it off in between. You just have to insert the spatula and try to remove that little excess thermal paste on the sides. Once you've removed enough of it, you can simply twist it and remove it. Once you've done this, and if you're using an AMD CPU, it's very important to check the pins to see if none of them are bent. Once you've done checking and everything is A-OK, -okay, grab your isopropyl alcohol, some lint-free paper towels, and in a circular motion, just remove all the excess thermal paste. Try to get it as clean as possible for the best results. Now insert the CPU back into the socket and we can continue to mount the pump. From the radiator to the tubes, this is the pump. And as you can tell, it already comes with pre-applied thermal paste. I'll be benchmarking with the pre-applied thermal paste just to keep everything as simple as possible, but I do intend to change it in the future. So before we place it, we need to set up the bracket. For Intel, just place the included backplate behind the motherboard and then you can place the pump. But for AMD, there's a few things we need to do. First, we need to find the included standoffs. Once we've screwed those into our motherboard backplate, we need to swap out the retention bracket from Intel to AMD. Just turn it in a counterclockwise motion and then place the AMD bracket and rotate it clockwise. It's pretty simple to do, just make sure you don't get that thermal paste on you because it's really hard to remove it. Lower the pump onto the CPU while making sure it's properly placed. Attach the thumb nuts diagonally to offset the pressure and then tighten them firmly. Moving on to the radiator, placement really depends on your case. There's also the correct way to place it, 
but I really won't get into that in this video. Make sure to check out this video right here or just set the radiator above your pump. It doesn't matter how you set it up, just make sure the pump is somewhere below the radiator. In my case, we're building inside the NCXT H510 Elite. So we have to remove this fan bracket and then install it onto the radiator. You do have to remove the shorter screws which mount onto the bracket and replace one of the longer included screws so that it attaches both the bracket and the radiator. If you were to attach the other fans, make sure you place them as exhaust so that it will pull rather than push. And finally, just insert the radiator and mount the bracket as it was. Here you can see the issue with clearance with this case specifically. I could remove this cable shroud and fit the other fans properly, but right now, I don't see it being worth it. And now with the hard part done, all we have left is cable manage and route accordingly. First we'll be installing the micro USB cable. Just plug it into the pump, route it behind your motherboard, and then into an available USB port. Next is the breakout cable. There's several things to connect here, but it's very simple. Connect the end to the pump. Then the three pin to either the CPU fan or the pump fan connector. The SATA male to an available SATA female from your PSU. And since we won't be using any more fans, that's pretty much it. If you do want to connect your fans, there is an included multi-fan connector, but you can also connect them to your motherboard. And we're done. We can finally remove this sticker. Now all that's left is to set it up and... So now that we've gone from a stock CPU cooler to an aftermarket AIO, is there a difference and was it worth it? Let's find out. First, let's look at the difference in size. It's very difficult to compare an AIO to an air cooler, but as you can see, just by having a radiator and two fans against one fan, the sheer difference in size is huge. I'll be using NTXT cam to monitor the temperatures as it is a NTXT product. First, let's do a cold start as a base. With a stock cooler, you see temperatures of about 40 degrees Celsius and it does rise. And this is what we get with an AIO. 28, 29, and it's completely stable. But cold start really don't mean anything since the CPU is not under any type of load. So let's move on to the game. The game I'm mainly playing nowadays is Valorant and it's known to be a CPU dependent game. With the stock cooler, you can see temperatures of about nearly 60 degrees Celsius and it continues to rise. But with the AIO, it's still at 30 and it's incredibly stable. And if you're wondering how it fares at 100% load, on the left side we have the stock cooler and on the right side we have the AIO. You can probably see how the difference in temperatures can affect its performance. But numbers don't really mean anything. Today, I've worked all day. I streamed, I'm playing a game, and I'm editing a 4K video at the same time, and my CPU is still at 30 degrees Celsius, which is absolutely amazing. And that's it. If you're wondering why I didn't go for the C63 with the LCD screen, that's why. All in all, I'm very happy with how it's performing and how it looks. Even though I technically didn't need it, it will be useful in the future when I do decide to change my CPU. But yeah guys, I hope this video was useful in case you were struggling with the instructions on how to set up your AIO. Let me know in the comments what you guys want to see next. Don't forget to leave a like, a sub, and a comment. It really helps out. But I'll see you in the next time. Bye.